Okay, so just a bit of a change of scenery here. I'm going to use Navionics to have a look at the tidal flows in Western Port. And you'll see from the screen that I've got up there now that um, these, these little, in this case, red arrows have appeared over here in Western Port. Um, here's one of them here. And I'll just get my little cursor onto it a bit better and we see that it then highlights the, that as an option. And if I tap on that, apart from zooming, I'm going to zoom out a bit for you so that you can remember where we are. Um, it now gives us a little graph down the bottom and tells us over in the left-hand side there um, pretty much the same information as in the arrow at the moment, but gives us an idea of what the tidal stream is in Western Port right at this very minute. And you can see that um, the time I did this this afternoon, it was 4.26 p.m. If I slide forward to about the time that we're going to be doing our talk tonight, about quarter past seven, there we go, we've still got two and a half knots of outgoing tide or ebbing tide. And you'll see from the graph down the bottom, you can see what expects to happen about here. It turns around and there goes the arrow around in circles and now the tide's flooding in. So by, let's see, midnight tonight, yep, it's midnight tonight, there'll be three knots of tide flowing up Western Port. Now this is something that we need to take into account when we're coming and going from Western Port affects our ability to move around inside Western Port as well, but it's particularly pertinent to the entry and exit. And we like to arrive at Western Port with ingoing tide, and you'll discover, if you work out your timings, that means you need to leave Port Phillip on what's called a slack water ebb. And that's a slack water time, one of those ones we were looking at earlier, where it's turning to an ebb tide or an outgoing tide afterwards because it's going to take you three to five hours to get from Port Phillip round to Western Port. And by the time you get round here, the tide will then be flooding again and you'll have a nice accelerated run up Western Port, either to Cowes or around the corner to Hastings, depending on where you're going. The reverse applies when you're trying to leave, but it gets a bit more complicated. So you'll see if we go to tomorrow, and the tide turns to an outgoing tide around 4.30 in the morning. So we've got a nice little window of assisting tide, and I'm just going to scroll backwards and forwards there between it, from about 4.30 or 4 o'clock through until 10 a.m. to get out of Western Port with an assisting tide. The problem is we go you beauty I'm gonna take where are we 2.7 knots that sounds like a really fast way to get out of Western Port the problem with a 2.7 knot outflowing tide in Western Port is that in this area down here and we'll get rid of the arrow for a minute in this area down here it, re it causes a um, fairly agitated sea state we'll call it even at the best of times because you've got a um, fairly normal incoming one to two meter southwesterly swell and with that outgoing tide of three knots, it tends to make it stand up fairly um, abruptly and you'll get white caps and things breaking across the top. So it's best, if possible, to try and avoid, and I'll just go back to that time again, avoid arriving in this area of, and we can see the numbers there, numbers, number six. Um, basically the entrance to the Western Port Channel because you're constrained to the channel in this area. You can see the shallow areas off there to the north uh, and Phillip Island to the south. Um, you really haven't got much choice around McAfee's Point uh, apart from being either in the channel or very close to it. So it's a good idea just to have a look and try and arrive there perhaps at that time rather than... A bit earlier at six o'clock when uh, whilst it might look like you're going to get a fast run out um, be be prepared for some um, bit of bouncing and a bit of smashing and crashing of you over the tops of waves as you get out uh, out of the western port channel there you still need to work out your timings because you've still got 
I'll just get rid of the tide there and I'll zoom out. You've still got a good five hour trip round to the heads. And you've got to keep in mind what window you're shooting for at the heads. The good news about coming in the heads is you get a six hour window with the flood tide when you can get in. So when you're planning a passage from Western Port, back here, anywhere in Western Port, round to Port Phillip, you start with the window of opportunity or the tidal window, tidal gate it's sometimes referred to as, um, that you've got for getting into Port Phillip and work backwards from there. Try to make sure you don't put yourself under too much pressure. And for those of you that are going, well, how come I can't just look up the tidal streams for Port Phillip on my uh, iPad? The answer is, I'll have a closer look here, you'll see that we don't have one of the, those arrows in the heads there. All we've got is a tide height indicator. It's just telling us the height of the tide, and this is what often traps people. Uh, young players or newbies will work on the assumption that slack water will be at either low water or high water. And as we've seen from our earlier uh, investigations of the timings of the various tides and, and how they work, that's far from the true. In fact, they are the times of peak flow. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks.